I see the pigs and I'm thinking, oh crap. And I'm just praying at this point that nothing fails. I'm confident that I made a good blade. This is gonna be spectacular. The Scottish Claymore. <sighs> the Claymore was used by Scottish mercenaries in battle from the 15th to 17th century. The weapon, usually 55 inches in length, would have to be held with both hands, and swordsmen were unable to carry a shield, symbolizing fearlessness on the battlefield. The clansmen would swing the sword in figure eight movements, decapitating and dismembering adversaries. Legend has it that Scottish knight William Wallace used a claymore in the war for Scottish independence. This epic weapon has been immortalized in the classic movie, Braveheart. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. The term claymore in Gaelic means great sword. To see how lethal your weapon is and to test its functionality according to its historic design, I will deliver two killing blows on this animal carcass. Scott, you're up. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. I see the pigs, and I'm thinking, oh, crap. I've cut test against the pigs, and they don't cut very easily at all. Oh, oh The moment Doug hits the pig and I hear that thud, I'm like, crap. Uh, Scott, we have a little problem here. <laughs> the hardness of your blade is a little bit on the uh, flexible side. It did not even cut the carcass. So that brings into question also the sharpness of your edge. I think and we're pretty much done. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> it will not kill. <sighs> this is a failure. Jonathan, you're up. Are you ready? Absolutely. I'm confident that I made a good blade. The blade is hard and it's ready to cut. This is gonna be spectacular. Oh boy. Jonathan, we have a major blade malfunction. It did initially cut through, but then it probably hit the spine. It just exploded. I'm not completely confident that I'm gonna come out with the win here, but my blade cuts, and that's more than Scott's. Jonathan, your blade suffered catastrophic failure. For safety reasons, we can no longer continue testing on your blade. Since both weapons have suffered malfunctions, Dave will now decide on the best course of action to move forward with the competition. Dave. In the Viking sagas, swords broke. In the Song of Roland, swords broke. But bent swords can be straightened. So we'd like to give you an opportunity, Scott, to straighten that weapon so we can take it forward into a sharpness test to help us determine our winner. So Scott, why don't you take a moment and straighten your weapon? Okay. It's as straight as it's going to get. Now, not only was the Claymore a battlefield intimidator, but it was also a Scottish symbol for physical prowess and strength. So what I'm going to do to test the edge of your blade is I am going to cut into this piece of sheet steel. So Scott, are you ready? Let's do it. I've got a 50-50 shot that it's going to do well. You know, I just want to see what happens. I am desperate to win. This is $10,000 on the line here. I don't even want to watch. Well, Scott, there's actually still an edge here. We can see what it did to the steel. Should have had the pig made out of steel. It probably would have cut better. <laughs> <laughs>
All in all, well done. Thank you. Overall, I'm pleased this was the first time I've ever made a blade of this size, of this complexity. Gentlemen, this by far was our most difficult challenge to date. Congratulations, you both delivered your Scottish Claymores. But there can only be one champion. Scott, congratulations, you are the Forged and Fire champion. Thank you. Jonathan, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Jonathan, the design of your blade was really going in the right direction. Basically, once that blade snapped, there just wasn't anything else we could do to test that blade. So that's why we're letting you go. Jonathan, please surrender your weapon. It's a great pleasure. Yeah, thank you, sir. I'll be back. Absolutely proud of myself. With every failure, there is a great lesson learned. And I think I'm moving forward from here. Scott, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and you'll be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. I've never won anything in my life. This is the first time I've ever won anything. You try your best, and you learn from it, and then you do it again until you perfect it. I mean, even though the sword didn't do what I wanted, it's still OK. I won. I'm certainly going to be buying drinks tonight. <laughs> the Spanish Navaja. Rising to popularity in the 1600s, the Spanish Navaja was a deadly folding weapon, common in duels and street brawls. This blade could be folded into the handle and locked in place, making it easy to conceal. It featured a locking ratchet mechanism, which kept the blade in place. The ratchet sound of a Navaja opening was also used to intimidate foes. Wielded with the blade up, a strike from the Navaja was difficult to parry, and wounds were often fatal. Navajas were often inscribed with pithy phrases in Spanish, boasting about the deadliness of the blade. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, we'll take your Spanish Navaja, then deliver killing blows on this deer carcass. Matthew, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yeah. OK, Matthew, nice and solid work right here but I'm still recovering from an injury. So please welcome Anthony Palmer. Anthony is one of the chief instructors of Marquita Kali. Today, he will have the pleasure of wielding your Spanish Nava. My biggest concern going into testing is the sharpness of my blade. Your blade is beautiful, and it's also solid in its feel. It lacerates easily. You can see it chopped right through the spine. Now, one of the pieces here came flying out during the test. But in terms of the sharpness and the wieldability of your blade, it will kill. Oh, yeah. OK, Wade, it's your turn. You ready? You bet. Please wait, I can hear the mechanism working in there. The thud of that deer carcass hitting the floor is absolutely the sound of $10,000. I feel like I'm ahead. That's where I want to be. I want to win it. All right, Wade, your blade is sharp. Thank you. The one issue is it's kind of rickety here, even while it was being wielded. But despite being rickety, it's deadly and it will kill. Thank you. Next up is a strength test. Ben? To test the strength and durability of your edge, as well as the overall construction, I'm going to smash into this bamboo with your Spanish Navajas. Matthew, you're up first. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. I'm looking at Wade like he is one up on me. His blade might wiggle a little bit, but it just cut that deer in half. I have to outperform him on this strength test if I'm going to win this competition. Well, Matthew, 
This thing's one a hell of a chopper. Held together beautifully. There was slight glinting that happened up here near the tip, but it's pretty darn sharp. Very well done. Thank you. Wade, you're up next. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> I'm ahead, he's ahead. I'm ahead, he's ahead. We've been this way the whole time. It's a battle. I want to win it. the third strike, things started to get kind of loose. And that torquing and the stress made your scales pop off. The only thing holding the cutting end to the handle end are these thin brass sheets. And I don't have confidence in their strength. This blade has lost its structural integrity. It's no longer safe to test. Wade, due to the catastrophic failure of the structural integrity of your weapon, we cannot continue testing that blade. So. I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I thought I could beat down a door with that thing, but you know, apparently you can't. I should have put more weight in the liner just to make the whole handle section much more strong. Matthew, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job. Uh, I just won Forge and Fire, and I am so excited. <laughs> Being here as a winner means a lot to me. I've had so much support throughout my life to do what I am passionate about, and my passion has proven to be what I should be doing. I'm supposed to be a metal worker. Stay with it. Don't stop. Keep going. Bladesmiths, you're probably wondering why there's five of you and only four anvils. That's because one of you will be eliminated before we even fire up the first forge. Up first is our qualifying test. Ben. Bladesmiths, in this sudden elimination round, I will be smashing your knives into these blocks of ice 10 times. Steve, you're up first. Are you ready? Let's do it. It's W2. It had to be a chopper, so I tried to design for that. Got some weight up front that'll hopefully carry it through here. I think my blade will destroy that ice. Oh. <clears throat> well, Steve, we have a problem. Yeah. On the 10th strike, the knife broke. That's because if you look closely at this blade, you'll see that there's a brown section of the crack. The brown section was an old crack that happened probably in the quench. It's been there a while. It's actually rusted. The rest of the edge is still pretty sharp. But at the end of the day, it did break. Steve, that's what we call a catastrophic blade failure, and you all know what that means. But it's not over yet. Each of your blades must survive all 10 ice block chops in order to move forward. You guys will be counting to 10 like you never have before in your life. Well, Brian, you're up next. Are you ready? Let's do it. This is the longest blade I've ever made. I put a maple handle on it. I don't think I'm nervous at all. I know that Steve's blade just broke, but I know my blade's solid. Your edge held up perfectly. It's like it never even saw the ice. It's still like the minute you brought it in. Got a nice finish to it. It's got a great shape. Very well done. Thank you. Matt, you're up. You ready? I'm ready. I used a piece of W2. I made it short, robust, strong. I think it feels good in the hand, so I think it's going to do well. I hope.
Nice. Well, Matt, your knife held up very well. It's got a very thick edge. It's still sharp. And it's still in one piece. Well done. Thank you. Tyler, you're up. You ready? Swing it like you mean it. <laughs> I made it out of W2. It may be the best blade that I've ever made, but I just hope mine holds up and I make it to 10. Well, Tyler, this extreme curve that you have here made it so that as I was chopping the ice, I ended up hitting my knuckle on the ice instead of the blade. But uh, it held up. The edge is still sharp. Well done. Thank you. Joey, you're up. You ready? Let's get her done, brother. I've never made a competition chopper before, so I seen what one looked like and went out and did my best to recreate it. I'm really very nervous. I'm hoping it's, it's going to do the job and, and survive through that chop. Well, Joey, your edge held up perfectly. I like the shape of it, the weight of it. It's a great chopper. Did some damage on the ice. Well done. Thank you, sir. Well, gentlemen, I don't think that any bladesmith is really prepared for the ice block chop and how devastating it can be. That being said, Steve, because your blade suffered a catastrophic weapons failure, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. To get eliminated before getting to work in the forge, is really, really disappointing. But hopefully, this is just going to take me uh, to the next level and being a better smith. That is a Maasai lion spear. The Maasai lion spear gets its name from an East African tribe of fearsome warrior nomads that date their origins back to the 15th century. Traditionally used to hunt lions, the weapon features a double-edged blade at one end and a fearsome spike at the other. This allows a Maasai warrior to engage his opponent in close quarters or at a distance. While today lion hunts have been replaced, the deadly spear lives on in popular culture and can even be spotted in the film Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. To see how lethal your weapon is, I will take your spear and deliver lethal blows on this big carcass. Matt, you're up first. Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Let's do this. What I'm most worried about is lateral force on this spear because it's a very thin, sleek spear. Well, that sucks. <laughs> Matt, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This is bad. Your weapon has suffered a catastrophic failure and cannot continue with testing. However, John, we can't just declare you the Forged and Fire champion. Your blade has to hold up for at least a stab and a slash on this carcass. Thug? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. I I've never been more, you know, nervous in my life. I I'm hoping and praying that he doesn't break in the same spot. Bladesmiths, as they're designed, these tests push your weapons to the limit. John, your blade survived the two cuts on our carcass. Matt, that means, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. I have to ask you to please leave the forge. Congrats, man. I'm happy for you. I'm disappointed. 
Given what I know now, I would have gone back and really tried chopping some things very hard with the spear and hopefully broken the handle myself. I'm really happy for John. Maybe I'm not happy to lose to John, but I'm glad John won. John, congratulations. You built a weapon that held up in our test. That makes you our new Forged and Fire champion who also receives a check for 10 grand. How do you feel right now? Uh, I feel like a million bucks, but I guess 10 grand will do. <laughs> All right, well, come on over here and shake our hands. Good job, bud. Thank Very you. Very good. I want to have to uh, talk to my wife about what I'm allowed to, to do with this prize money. I know one thing, my baby girl's going to get in a little new wardrobe. Bladesmiths, welcome to our first ever dual strength test. First one to do is take your weapons, um, but put the edges on those big industrial nuts and wail down on them with a baton. Then I'm gonna take the tips, put them on that sheet steel, and then I'm gonna baton those pommels that you threaded onto your weapons. See how well they hold up. Bill, you ready? Yes, sir. Well, I hope my blade stays in one piece, especially when he's striking on that nut. And this is all building up the anxiety. Yo, come on. Well, we got a couple issues here. Overall, your handle held up well. Your threaded pommel held up to that batoning. Big issue is your blade. We're missing some pieces here. First blow on that nut, it just rounded off a bit. The second two actually took bites out of it. And when we did the sheet steel, your tip came off as well. You can actually still see it in there. So it's a bit on the brittle side. But overall, it's light. Feels good in the hand. So nicely done. Thank you. Chuck, how are you feeling? Not too good. We're going to do it anyhow. Let's do it. After I see it, Bill's edge deformation and his tip breaking off, my heart's racing. If this guy's work's going to suffer this kind of damage, what's mine going to do? figure is something in the grain structure of the metal in that certain area didn't hold up. Catastrophic failure happened. This is a hell of a test. Chuck, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure. Only making it to the third strike. However, you're not done yet. It would seem that both you and Cole's fate lie with the strength of Cole's blade. Now, Cole, your blade still has to survive the strength test. It's got to make it through at least three licks on that nut. You think you got what it takes? Well, let's see what happens. All right. I'm definitely nervous about how it's going to hold up. Jay has a reputation of beating the out of all the knives he tests. And you know, I'm expecting him to not hold back on mine. I'm worried about that weak part of my spine. Chuck, Cole, we find ourselves in interesting circumstances. Both of your blades suffered catastrophic failures in the middle of our strength test. However, Chuck, your blade survived three strikes, and Cole, your blade only went for two. So with that in mind, I have to ask you, Cole, please leave the forge. That was pretty close. I really thought I was going to make it through. Proud of what I made. It broke, but I think it looked great. I'm still a bladesmith, and I'm going to keep on keeping on. The Arming Sword. The Arming Sword was the sword of choice for medieval European knights during an era of advanced armor, when swords needed to penetrate both armor and flesh. 
The blade's point has a distinctive taper, allowing pinpoint thrusts into vulnerable areas on an enemy. A central fuller in the blade reduced its weight, making it a well-balanced and effective one-handed weapon. Wielded with a shield in the opposite hand, knights were protected as they delivered deadly blows powerful enough to cleave a skull into. In 1429, French troops made a heroic counterattack at the Siege of Orléans, led by Joan of Arc wielding the arming sword. To test the lethality of your arming sword, I will deliver slashes and thrust on these boar carcasses. John, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. That hide is super thick. To get through that, you really need a very fine edge and not a lot of weight behind it. And I didn't build that. All right, John, let's talk about your arming sword here. It's heavy. It did cut on some parts of the carcass, other parts, it just bounced off. Thrusting-wise, though, it did what it was designed for. This will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, Drew, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. When I saw John's blade hit the carcass the first few times, it didn't really cut so great. So I'm worried about my sharpness on my blade. All right, Drew, this is a very sharp blade, a great thrusting blade. And I like how you put a counterbalance right here because all the weight is nicely distributed so where I can thrust and slash. Your blade, sir, will kill. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to our strength test. One of my favorites, the ice block chop. And we supersized it. What I'm going to do is take each of your swords, and I'm going to beat them repeatedly and viciously into this big chunk of ice. It's going to test the overall construction of your sword as well as its edge holding ability. Now, what your swords do to the ice is secondary compared to what the ice does to your swords. And John, you're up first. How you feeling, buddy? <laughs> Nervous. Well, we're going to do it anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is very heavy, very hard to control. Also, aside from having gaps in your shoulders here, you've got a pretty good bend in the blade. And that was there before I started. Not a lot of edge left, but you survived. Drew, how are you feeling? I'm ready. Good, so am I. Jay's tough on blades. Ice is tough on blades. It doesn't matter who's swinging on it. And I'm just praying at this point that nothing fails. <clears throat> Drew, this is a beautiful sword. Thank you. Blade is still razor sharp, which is very impressive with an ice block chop. That being said, the ice block chop is meant to be brutal. It's meant to test the overall structural integrity of your sword from tip to pummel. Problem is, I'm holding your pummel in this hand instead of this hand. So that's an issue. Yeah. Drew, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure. I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I'm sad that my blade failed, but I feel really good about the fact that I was able to make something completely outside of my wheelhouse. But none of that matters if the bomb will come flying off. If the functionality is in there, the aesthetics really do not matter. I had a ton of fun. I would do it again in a second. 
I'm super excited to get back to the West Coast and just get back to work chipping away at my custom orders. John, congratulations. You're the next Forge and Fire champion. Good job. Thanks. You'll be receiving a check for $10,000. How do you feel? I didn't want to win like that, but I feel pretty good. I made butter knives in the first round. I come back with a beast of an arm and sword, and now I'm Forge and Fire champion. Good job, brother. When I get home, the first thing I'm doing is buying a press and get right back out to the shop and forge some more. It is only driving me to do it more. <laughs> Your final challenge is to forge a Marine Corps officer's sword, also known as a Mameluke. Since 1825, the Mameluke sword has been awarded to U.S. Marines to recognize extraordinary service. This tradition began when the rulers of Tripoli bestowed this weapon upon Marine Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon for his bravery during the Battle of Derna. The weapon itself originates from the Ottoman Empire in Persia, with many similarities to the Persian Shamshir. Featuring a thin blade, shallow curve, and its signature inward curved pommel, this deadly sword was ideal for cavalry and foot soldiers to deliver lethal slashes and thrusts on their enemy. This blade was so dangerous, legend had it that it was nearly unbreakable and could cut a person in two. All right, Marines, welcome to the kill test. To find out what lethal damage your weapon will do, I'll take care of your weapon. Deliver killing blows to this ballistics dummy. Trip, you up first. You ready for this? Get it, killer. Hoorah. <laughs> Going into this kill test, man, I just hope that it performs better than the K-bar that I made. Yikes. Whoa. Holy moly. <laughs> All right, Trip. First up, the handle construction. It is comfortable. Your edge here is sharp. Even cutting through the skull, no issues at all. No chipping, no glinting. And when you thrust with this, it penetrates and cuts all the way out. Overall, sir, your weapon will kill. All right, you raw. All right, Gene, you're next. You ready? Let's do this. Let's do this. I'm pretty darn nervous. Yeah. Well, I know my blade is sharp, but I don't know if it's strong enough to get through these tests. I'm really worried that at the end of this test, my sword's gonna look like a pretzel. All right, Gene, your weapon picked up a warp right here, okay? Your handle, coupled with blood all over, made it very slippery and hard to hold on to because it's blocky and smooth, and I lost my grip on it. That's a very dangerous thing to happen when you're trying to wield the weapon. But your edge is still sharp, your tip is still thrustable, and more importantly, it will kill. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. So to test the overall construction of your blade and see if they're gonna hold an edge, I'll be smashing into these pots. Now remember, this test is not about what your swords do to those pots, but those pots do to your swords. Trip, you up, you ready? Ready. Okay. These clay pots are thick, they're brutal. I mean, they'll send a shock wave down this blade. There's no telling what's gonna happen. Yep. Holy moly. God, dog. No. Well, Trip, a few things before we get to the obvious. Your handle construction is very comfortable. Felt really good in my hand. Felt like I could do a lot with it. But right there at the edge, there's that little brown spot. 
you got a micro crack on oh, that edge. Yeah. So as soon as I hit that pot, it cut loose. I loved it, feel its shape and its look, but obvious problem. All right, Tripp, while I know any Marine could take that blade and still continue to fight, in this competition, your blade suffered a catastrophic failure after one strike on that vase. Gene, your blade only has to survive one strike on these pots. The entire Marine Championship for Forged and Fire lies on one swing, and I've got a big old warp in my blade, so it's not over yet. Gene, first off, you're in one piece. You picked up that bend earlier on, but you didn't pick up any more in this test. Strong blade, held up, good job. Thank you. All right, Trip. looks like Gene's blade held up. That means that you cannot move forward to represent the Marine Corps in our next challenge. Please leave the forge. Super disappointed. There's really no way to tell that you have, like, any minor cracks or anything like that. So you just, hey, you find out when you test them. That's how we found out today. Get it, brother. Gene's going to freaking bring home that yeah. Battle of the Branches, Marine Corps anvil. He's winning it for the Marine Corps. Gene, congratulations. You've won this competition, and that means that you're going to be moving forward into our Battle of the Branches final competition to represent the Marine Corps at the Marine Corps' anvil. And that's going to give you an opportunity to win a check for $50,000. Good job, brother. Thank you. Holy cow. I did not see this coming. It's been a fun ride up until now, but now I got to represent the Marines. So now it's, it's game on, and it's about to get real. And those other branch service members better look out. The Chinese War Sword. Ooh. The Chinese War Sword was a traditional weapon of China's peasant armies, beginning with the Qing Dynasty and continuing through the 20th century. Similar to the Falchion, the War Sword is a massive two-handed cleaving sword that generates a tremendous amount of swinging power while slashing and chopping through opponents. With a frightening reputation as an instrument of decapitation, this blade vanquished enemies during the Boxer Rebellion and later during clashes with Japanese forces in the Second Sino-Japanese War. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your Chinese war sword and deliver one strike on this ram carcass. Let's see how deadly they are. Bobby, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. My heart's just bouncing out of my chest. You've got the skin, you've got the bones, you've got the hide. I only get one shot at this ram carcass. All right, Bobby, one and done. As much as this is very intimidating in its look, it is crafted nicely. It's got a beautiful look to its finish. The balance is just right for a two-handed sword. A little forward heavy, but it tells you that's where the power is. Your edge is sharp. Even cutting through the spine and bones, no issues, no glinting, no rolls. Overall, sir, your Chinese war sword will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, Will, your turn. Ready? Yes, sir, I'm ready. Let's do this. Doug picks up my weapon, and at this point, all the nerves are out the window. I'm just excited. He's walking towards this ram's carcass, and I'm ready to see it fly right through. Well, let's talk about your Chinese war sword here. First up, it's a very bulky handle. It's rounded. So as you get a good grip on it, you can feel it starts to spread my hands around. But the wrapping that you put around it does allow me to get a good grip on it, so good on that. And one shot, one kill. <laughs> Overall, sir, your weapon, it will kill. Thank you, sir. Ooh, I just felt a frightening chill. Must be the strength test. Jay? 
You boys remember me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to the ice block chop. This is going to test not only your edge and your heat treat, but the overall construction of your swords. Now, what your blades do to the ice, I'm not too concerned about. I want to see what the ice is going to do to your blades. Bobby, up first. How you feeling? Ready to go. Me too. Let's do it. This is not just an ice block. This, this thing's a glacier. Great job, Bobby. Still razor sharp. No rolls, no glints, nothing. Everything's still tight. I mean, one of the swings, I was able to split that block. So it's got good feel. Uh, just nice job overall. Thank you. OK, Will, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm nervous, but I'm excited. OK, I'm just excited, so. This is going to be brutal. I'm really worried about the crack in my tang right now. Chopping through a block that big is so tough. If there are any compromises in my blade, this is where they're going to show their head. Well, we got a problem, Will. It's a big problem, sir. Right where you did your very rough hollow grind, there's a couple dark spots right in here. And with that thin spot right there, it was enough to allow that blade to just snap right in half on the first swing. So did not survive, but good effort. Thank you, sir. Well, Will, sometimes this competition is full of tough breaks, and you've had one on the first strike against this ice block in our strength test. Unfortunately, we cannot continue testing your blade against your opponents. And for that reason, I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your opponent's hand, and then please leave the forge to your right. Come on, my friend. Yes, sir. Excellent work, dude. Thank you, brother. It's tough. Having a blade break is obviously, you know, it's a tremendous failure. But at the end of the day, I did the best I could with the tools I had, and I'm still proud of the piece that I put forward. This competition has given me the inspiration to move forward and challenge myself in new ways. Bobby, you are the Forge and Fire champion, and that's the title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Come on forward, my friend. Great Thank job, you. great Thank work. You. I feel on top of the world right now. That's a great piece, man. I was fun to swing. This is not just a win for me. This is a win for my family, my <laughs> friends, the other Smiths that I teach in the forge. Uh, this goes a long ways for our whole community. The Zulu War Axe. The Zulu War Axe is a deadly and elegant weapon now used primarily for ceremonial purposes by the Zulu tribe in South Africa. Passed down from generation to generation, this weapon was effective against enemies, as well as serving as a symbol of political power and resistance to colonial rule. Featuring an elongated arrowhead shape that swelled in the center, this razor-sharp blade provided a way for officers to reach over their own formations to tear down and destroy enemy shields. The current king of the Zulu nation, Goodwill Swelatini, wields this weapon and marches to this day. Your Zulu war axe look quite scary, but it's time to find out what kind of lethal damage they can do. To find that out, I will take your weapon, deliver some chops and slashes on this war carcass. Dustin, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm feeling nervous, anxious. This is not going to be an easy test. I mean, this boar, it's got tough skin, bones, but I want to see this blade chop this boar in half.
Come on down, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, Dustin, let's talk about your Zulu War Axe. It's quite surprising that something this light with not a lot of metal can cut deep into this boar carcass. Your blade stayed true. The handle construction is ovoid enough to wear. Even though it tapers, I have a very good feel for it. Overall, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Weston, your turn. So you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. My first concern is the handle breaking. Uh, after that, it's that junction between the blade and the tang. I mean, it's a weak spot. Anything can happen there. All right, Wes, let's talk about your Zulu War Axe here. What I find interesting here is that the design of this blade, there's a sweet spot in here with a little bit of weight. So that first swing alone cut in very deep. There are no glints or rolls on it. The handle construction is avoid enough to where I get a good grip and I can get a good feel on it. And more importantly, sir, it will kill. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test the ammo box chop. I'm gonna test the strength and durability of your axes by smashing them into these ammo boxes. Remember, this test is all about what those boxes do to your axes and not the other way around. Dustin, you're up first, you ready? Let's do it. All right. I know I nailed my heat treat, but this test is, is brutal. And I just keep thinking, please survive, please survive. Well, Dustin, got an obvious issue here. Uh, you know, I'm looking at your grain in here. It's beautiful. It's nice and, and velvety tight. But right here, there's a little dark spot, which was a, a crack. It happened right where the join of your tang and your blade is. And that little crack is a stress riser, and it leads to big failure. Sure. All right, Dustin, your blade has broke on the third strike against these ammo boxes in our strength test. Now, that doesn't mean that you're out of this competition. Your competitor still has to endure the same rigors. Weston, that means that your blade must survive three strikes against these ammo boxes. And if it does, you'll be the new Forge and Fire champion taking home that check for 10 grand. You guys ready for this? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Ben. All right, Weston, how you feeling? Nervous. I would be, too. Clearly, this is not an easy test. And if Dustin's blade broke, there's a good chance mine will as well. I'm just hoping it can take three strikes. Weston, it held up, nice job. This is a nice light ax, a lot of fun to swing. With every swing, I could feel the, the reverberation, just it kind of jiggling in my hands. It was singing, really well done. Thank you, thank you. Weston, congratulations, your blade held up. Dustin, that means that your blade doesn't make the cut. I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then exit the forge. Great job, man. Thank you, sir. I'm pretty bummed out. I really wanted to win this whole thing. Weston, congratulations, bud. Thank you. Good job. But this has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. This is not the result I wanted, but at the end of the day, I'm here, I'm alive, I'm healthy, so I'm happy. Weston, congratulations. You made a beautiful Zulu war axe, and that makes you the Forest and Fire champion. That's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Come forward and shake our hands, my friend. I am the Forged and Fire champion, and I feel elated. I came here to prove that I could compete with some incredibly talented smiths, and I came out on top. It's been a blast. The Nimcha.
The Nimcha is a single-handed scimitar, widely used throughout North Africa. This unique weapon featured a hooked handle, knuckle guard, and forward-pointing quillions that were designed as a defensive tool to catch an opponent's blade. Featuring a deep fuller on both sides, the sword was light, quick, and deadly on the battlefield. Largely made of recycled blades, the Nimcha could be forged quickly and in large quantities, and was a crucial weapon used by the Ottoman soldiers during the Great Siege of Malta in 1565. Placements, welcome to the kill test. Well, it's time to find out what kind of lethal damage your Nimchas will do. So I will take your weapon, deliver some lethal blows on this war carcass. Ryan, you're up first. You ready for this? Make some barbecue cut. All right, let's try. Seeing the boar carcass, I'm smiling from ear to ear. I wanted to see him cut a boar carcass in half with it, but I know it's razor sharp. <laughs> All right, Ryan. I don't know what's a bigger beast, the boar carcass or your nimcha right here. This is a heavy sword. Everything about the weight that you have on this allows for a very, very deep cut, but it's a lot of work because of the weight. It's very forward heavy. But overall, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Steve, your turn, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. I'm excited. Ryan's blade cut well, so I know I've got some competition here. Mine better perform. <laughs> All right, Steve, let's talk about your Nimcha right here. First up, the handle construction, it's smooth. It's not blocky, so I like that you have an ovoid over there, and it marries in. Before I started testing, your blade had a little bit kick off to the side. But after the test, it stayed the same. Your edge, with a thinner profile like that, cuts deep. Also, it is a much lighter sword than your competitors. I can control with every slash. Overall, sir, your blade feels good. It will kill. Thank you, sir. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. The pillar and pop chop. To test the strength and durability of your edge, as well as the overall construction of your nimchas, I'll be chopping into these pots and pillars. Remember, this test is all about what the targets do to your blades, and not what your blades do to the target. Ryan, you're up first. You ready for this? Tear it up. All right, man. I know I'm behind the eight ball right now. Uh, I need to perform really well in the strength this test. Hopefully, I'll, I'll pull back up in the line with him and be evened up. In the strength test, the edge that you have on here took a slight roll. Like, I, I can't see it so much as I can feel it. The rest of it is, is really wicked sharp. It's still all in one piece. Nice job. Thank you. Steve, you're up next. You ready for this? Yes, sir. All right, cool. I feel pretty good. I think my blade cut a little better than Ryan's, maybe, but he didn't have that cant and flaw on his blade. So I think I've got a blade that'll hold up to it. Steve, I got a problem, man. <laughs> when I picked this sword up, I was excited. It's nice, light, got a good shape to it. But looking at your steel here, there's a really big grain in here. It really could have used more thermocycling, I'm guessing. I don't know how you, uh, how you heat treated this, but however you did, it ended up brittle. Well, Steve. Your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure during our strength test and can no longer continue with testing. Therefore, I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then please exit the forge. Congratulations, man. I'm disappointed my blade broke. 
I didn't want to go out that way, but it is what it is. Thank you. I just must have got my heat treat wrong. Nobody's fault but my own. I didn't win the competition, but I, I gained so much more than I lost here. I'm going to walk away here with my head held high, and, and it's going to make me a better bladesmith for it. I've really learned a lot. Ryan, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check. Go ahead. You can smile for $10,000, brother. Good job. Come on, man. Thank you, sir. Good job, man. Thank you. It's not how I wanted to win this competition, but you know, it is what it is. First thing I'm going to do is hug and kiss my wife and, and love on the kids and play with them and get right back in the forge. There's no sleep for the wicked.